guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video, and today we're going to do a character guide on Queen. So Queen is basically kind of like an aura bot support character. Um, she has a little bit of DPS in her, she kind of has like this rage mode thing that she does, we'll kind of talk about it, but she does operate kind of unique to other characters, so we'll definitely see that in the character guide. Um, because she's kind of like a support aura character, somebody was already asking me, well, is she a force charging character? And the answer is no, she actually isn't. So if you go to her force enhancements, she's pretty much got standard force enhancements. Um, nothing crazy, it does extra charging. So once again, um, depending on if you like Queen and want to use her, that's going to help you determine how far you want to invest on that. Um, basically 23 is kind of the minimum you want for like a standard just to get that force charge up to make sure you're getting normal force gains for having full force enhanced characters on the team. But if you want the most damage out of her, you got to take her to the 30 because all of her skills get buffed um, and her ones, her, her level 30, one of her skills gets a big buff there. So um, that's pretty much what you want to do. So you could try her out at just, you know, I have mine at 10 only um, because that's to me, that's like the minimum investment for someone who has like a bajillion character points like I do. You can go 10 on everyone safely because it doesn't cost you any four stones. Um, but if you're someone that's like low on character points, don't even go up to 10 on characters unless you know you're going to use them, right? So let's go ahead and look at her artifacts, her spheres, and then we'll jump into the showcase. Um, and we're going to kind of see how she's operating here, right? So for the artifacts, let's go ahead and basically it's going to be attack 108 and upright intellectual up, which is her C50 passive. Um, once again, anytime you're getting party stuff out of these... Uh, artifacts i usually prioritize that so to me the upright intellectual you should um prioritize the most because you're getting party max brave and attack with it it just helps her auras basically it's giving an extra 15 percent to those if you have three of those on so you definitely want to do that and then attack 108 would be your next priority to help boost her damage but you could do max brave or something else there if you need to um, now let's go ahead and look at her spears so she's got an a slot and two d slots um so for the A slot, you want to prioritize um, Brave Damage or Attack there. Um, there are some pretty good ones. And one that I didn't mention on, you know, Titus, because he wants big time attack. I said King was really good on him, but Noel is also pretty good on Titus. That's got, I think it's a 15% attack sphere. Noel works good on Queen as well. Um, Cloud's got a pretty good Brave Damage sphere. And then Raijin's got a good one as well. Um, for me, I just threw on just an extra attack sphere that I had. So I had a Tifa one sitting around. So just when she deals a crit, raises attack by 4%. Tifas could also work on like Barrett, who I also did a guide on, and he specializes in crit damage. So those crit spheres are really good for characters like Barrett also. Um, then in the D slot, Queen herself actually has a very good D slot sphere. Um, and I got one for getting her EX, but I'm going to save it for like a character I'm going to use a lot more often. But her D sphere is when you break or attack a target that is broken, it raises party max brave and attack that's actually really good for like a support character to raise max brave and attack of the party so i'm going to save that I, i'm not sure which character i'm going to put it on yet but i'm going to save that one um for that so otherwise just go ahead and use d spheres that are attack buffing spheres so once again lease ash and hope are pretty good standard ones um i actually have a lot of extra lease spheres so i just put two lease spheres because lease is stackable so once again, I'm just getting party attack every time she breaks or attacks a broken target there. So that's what I decided to go with there. Let's go ahead and jump into the showcase. Um, I've just got Rem and Garnet here, which is fine. Now, something notable about team building with Queen, if you really like Queen and want to go crazy with her, um, some notable characters to run her with is you could run her with um, Ash or Lude because they're EX charging because Queen's damage really comes from her EX. So you could run her with an EX charging character like Lude or Ash. Um, and then also where with her big attack she's going to be doing, like Brave Gains are pretty important for her. So having like a Roha around or an Aroha call, which I did put an Aroha call on her, um, because she really wants to have Brave when she's doing her Devastate attack. And we'll talk about that, how you get that and what that is all about, right? So let's go ahead and start with Garnet here. Um, I'm just doing a Garnet Rem combo here just to like make her look good and get to her turns fast. Um, but like I said, you could do some of those recommended characters if you want to make Queen look really good. Um, let's go ahead and do the AA. And then we're going to go ahead and do the green burst attack here. Um, there we go. I got to fix Garnet. Her green burst attack, I don't want way at the bottom like that. I have to like reorganize her skills. I keep forgetting to do that. All right, so then Queen's going to come up here. Um, basically with Queen, her... 
15 CP is just like a party party battery um, and it extends her buffs. It's honestly like a filler attack. Like her actual 15 and 35 buttons actually don't feel that great to press. Like I said, it's all going to come from her EX. Her 35 CP is going to give her two buffs that you want to upkeep. Um, they're just very good aura buffs and things like that. Um, the LD's got a really important buff that you want to upkeep there. The thing with her LD, and we're going to start with that. So I usually like to open with the LD here. So let's go ahead and start with that. So what the LD is doing, it's doing a big party heal. Um, it's doing a big AoE brave attack. Um, and it does a party battery. But then it gives her this buff called Judgment Wave. Basically what Judgment Wave does is it gives party last stand, among some other buffs. But party last stand is a very uh, powerful mechanic. The way last stand works is if you're above 50% HP and you would be KO'd, you actually live with one HP left. So having that party last stand is actually a very notable thing that Queen does, right? Uh, let's go ahead and swap and get right back into Queen here. Okay. And then basically we'll straw off her 15 and her 35 until we get her EX built up. Her EX is going to take a little bit to build up here. So we'll have a few turns to kind of play around. So let's go ahead and use Mana Sphere next. So this is Mana Sphere. Once again, you're going to see the damage is not great, right? Like, her buttons don't feel very good to press, like I said. But once we get the EX going, then you're going to see, like, her higher potential. But basically, uh, her that that attack we just did was a party battery, AoE attack, and then she gets a couple of buffs from it. So you just want to make sure you're upkeeping those buffs. Let's get back to Queen again. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and do the 15, which is the Speed Rush Thrust. Um, and it's got a lot of uses, so this might be just like a filler attack, basically. It extends her buffs by one turn, but you can see the damage here isn't crazy, and it does do a battery on it, but, you know, that wasn't really good damage there. So, we're going to kind of see her EX start to go to town here, and you're going to see if you kind of like that better. Um, let's go ahead. We got Queen's EX up, so let's swap into her, okay? Now, her EX is actually kind of crazy. <laughs> um, it's kind of like a... Uh, it's like a mini Arden kind of. So if you're familiar with Arden, Arden basically like sucks his HP down to one and then he can't be killed. Well, Queen's going to do that also. So let's go ahead and do the EX. Let's look at the damage here. She's going to sacrifice her HP down to one, but she's got that pink aura behind her bar, right? So when the characters have that pink aura, so you can see that damage was decent there, right? Um, when they have that pink aura, they basically can't be KO'd. So that's really nice to note. So if they HP attack her here, she won't die, and she is getting attacked, so we'll see if they try it. Um, let's go ahead, and we'll just do this. Now, she only has that while her buff is up, and she's got a three-turn buff. Now, this is basically... Yeah, you can see she just took an HP attack there, but she didn't die. Now, unfortunately, she got paralyzed, and I don't know that I have a way to fix her paralyzed, so we might have to like lose a turn of her, which is kind of unfortunate. Let's go ahead and just swap into her right now. I actually know. Let's do this. Let's use Cure just because we can still Cure her up. That's fine. We'll do that. And then we'll swap into her to get rid of the Paralyze because I don't think I brought a Cleansing Call or anything. I didn't even think about that with these guys. That's fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and swap. But I'm, I'm glad I got the demo that she was basically invincible there, right? So let's swap into Queen. It's just going to eat up her Paralyze. And then we'll have to get to her again. Oh no, did swap turns cleanse it? It's gone. I... Okay, whatever. She, her paralyze is gone. Um, so now what happens is, is she's in rage mode right now. Okay, and notice all of her skills are locked out. So while she's in this three turn rage mode, and that's the overhead, you can see the glasses above her head with three turns. When she's got her glasses on, you don't mess around. Like this is this is it. Now devastate is her like main damaging attack, but you can also use the uh, balestra lunge. So if she's capped on Brave, you want to use Devastate because that's really going to get the most damage. But if she's low on Brave, you're going to sacrifice a lot of damage. So she's high on Brave. So let's do Devastate here. Yeah, so you can see that was even more damage than her actual EX. And once again, this is a fairly minimally invested. I think if you have a fully invested Queen, that's probably doing near a million damage, which is pretty darn good, right? Let's go ahead and we'll swap back into Queen again. Once again, her glasses are still up, so she's locked into these attacks, right? Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll use um, the Velestra Lunge. Basically, this one um, does extend her buffs, and it is a free turn. It doesn't count against turn count. So if you need, and it helps give her Brave, too. So if you, like, just need to stall out, it's a free instant turn. Gives her some Brave. 
um, then you could combo that into Devastate if you need to, right? Now, the other thing you can do is you could say, um, if you have like a Rohawk call, you could look, you're even locked out of calls. Like, it's crazy. She's completely locked out. But if you do like a Roha call before the EX, then you could get even more damage out of Devastate. Or if you have like a Roha in the party, right? But you can see like she didn't get like a crazy rework here. She's only getting Force Enhancements. Now remember, mine's only Force Enhancement 10. So if you have her Force Enhancement 30, um, if you have Lufenia armor on her, I think she's easily hitting a mil plus with that attack, which is actually competitive damage. It's actually very good. And she does have pretty good auras. So... If you like Queen and really invest in her, I think she is a decent character, but she isn't, I think, the main reason you should be pulling on these banners. You're either pulling for Tidus or you're not pulling at all, but if you have her kit and maybe just didn't understand how she works, um, hopefully this helps you out uh, to figure out how she works, but that's basically it. Now, we're going to get to her turn again here, and you're going to see she's going to revert back to normal. Now, keep in mind that whole time that she was in rage mode, she was rebuilding the EX, so you can see she's actually not far away from getting her EX again, but if you want to... Like I said, you could bring her with like Lude um, or Ash and like instant recharge her EX and you literally can just keep looping her EX and her Devastate and just keep that going like crazy, right? Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, we didn't show this yet, but her AA is just a quick little spot heal. So if you need a spot heal, you can use the AA. The other thing is now that her glasses, her rage mode is off, she now can be killed, um, but she will still party last stand provided you're keeping up the LD. So let's go ahead and do the LD and make sure we've got our party last stand up. Yeah, even that LD damage isn't that great. That was only 260k AoE, right? Um, so let's try to get her... We'll go into her EX combo one more time. So that you guys can see that. But this time what we'll do is we'll use a Roja's call before we do the EX and see if we can get more damage out of that Devastate. I mean, with Garnet, you're already battering like crazy anyway. So it probably won't make a huge difference. But um, that's fine. Let's go ahead and swap into Queen. Even though she was coming up next anyways, that's fine. All right, so let's go ahead and do a Roja call. So what a Roja call does is you retain a certain amount of Brave from your HP dump. So as she's doing all these dumps from Devastate, she's retaining the Brave, um, which helps her out, right? So let's go ahead and do the EX again. So sacrifice herself down to one, but she's invincible. She's got her Rage Mode now, and she's got her glasses on. So she's ready for business. Um, so what we'll do is we're just going to go ahead and swap into her again. I mean, sure, we'll take the free, free Cure. I mean, Rem actually isn't a bad combo either, but you don't really have to worry about, like, curing Queen, because when she exits Rage Mode, she does heal herself to 50% health. So she's not like a dead duck when she comes out of Rage Mode. That's the other thing I should mention to keep in mind, right? So let's go in again. Um, and we've got a Roja call, so let's do Devastate and see what the damage is looking like here. Once again, it might not be much different, but we'll see. Yeah, six. it's like in the 600k range. It's pretty much the same because... Um, <laughs> Um, Garnet is already like really helping us with that. But if you're not running Garnet and you want to help buff that a little bit, you totally could do that, right? So anyways, guys, there you go. That's Queen. Um, upkeeper buffs, keeper aura is going. Uh, let her go into rage mode once in a while. Um, just keep in mind, you're going to be locked out. So you're not going to be free to like use your calls and stuff. So just make sure that you're aware. You don't want to put yourself in a bad spot where like you need a quick spot heal and you can't do it with her because um, she's in her rage mode, right? So anyways, hope this guide helps. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you all on the next one.